1 Kings 17. And Elijah. Boom. There he is. Who is he? What is he? He just shows up on the scene. The Tishbite, who was of the inhabitants of Gilead. So this is on the other side of the Jordan River. Where uh, Reuben, the Gadites, and the half-tribe of Manasseh settled. So he crosses over the Jordan River up north. Crosses over the Jordan River and he meets with Ahab, the wicked king. Now we need to realize that before God judges anybody, before God sets up anything against man in his sin, he will send an ambassador, he will send a prophet, he will send a preacher to you. When the city of Sodom, God sent the angels. With Babylon, God sent Daniel. Christians today are told to go all in the world and preach the gospel before they die and go to hell. Now, as me and my family, or my family and I, however you want to put the English, we have to realize not only do we obey the gospel, the Bible, go in all the world and preach the gospel, but we need to realize that when we are part of the ministry that God's given us, that when God sends us to particular places and he has sent us to places that we have not been before, we must understand that God may be sending us to a particular person that that person, guess what? If he doesn't repent, if he doesn't get right, if he doesn't turn to God, it may be the last straw for him. So here's Elijah shows up to Ahab. Goes right up to said it unto Ahab. Now it doesn't say where they're at. I don't know if he's in the palace, if he's out in the field, but man, he just walks right up to the king and says, I got something to tell you. And what's he say? As the Lord God of Israel liveth, Though Israel has been divided into two nations, the same God is over both those nations. It's Israel north that has left God, has forsaken God, has rebelled against God, and has set up their own religion. God's like, get over there, and you better tell them, I've had it, I'm angry. Evidently, you have not got the word that these kings are dropping dead. These kings are falling by the sword. They're being killed by prophets who said, this is what I'm going to do to your family if you don't get right. They don't get right. And the prophecies happen over, over, over. Now God sends Elijah. And we're in some serious business with a serious sinner as Ahab and Jezebel. And you got to remember or look at, we don't know what the character of Elijah is. He's Jewish. They're short. But we got to realize with his mouth, he has spoken what God has told him to do, no matter what his size is, no matter what he is. He's a man that speaks the word of God and speaks it faithfully. Like uh, it was the gather Nathan that went to David, thou art the man. For whom I stand, I stand before the God of Israel. You don't. I stand before that God. You better listen to me, brother. Why would he say brother? They're not saved. They're Jewish. There shall not be dew nor rain these years. But according to my word, not the word of the Lord, God has given me the ability to say no rain. And there'll be no rain. Let's take two places. James 5.17. James 5.17 The Epistle of James 5.17 To Jewish people. James is written to the twelve tribes scattered aboard. Elias was a man subject to like passions as we are. He hunger, he ate, he's a sinner. He's everything we are. He's no strong man of God. And he prayed earnestly. Look at that. Prayed earnestly. That it might not rain. It's his fault. What we're going to read about the drought is Elijah's fault. And it rained not on the earth by the space of three years 
and six months. Now that's the time of the Great Tribulation period. Now, Revelation 11, 6. Let's look at a particular character in the Bible. Revelation 11, 6. He's not named. There are two men that are not named in Revelation 11, but by the study of the Bible that we're reading and what we're reading today and studying, we can 95% be sure who these two people are. And when we get to the study of the Lord will, and we get to the study of Malachi, we will be more sure. Revelation 11, verse 6. Oh, well, verse 4. These are the two olive trees and the two candlesticks standing before God of the earth. Now, it says James and John, and it says the mother of James and John came to Jesus one day and say, Lord, can you grant my two sons to sit on either side of you? Remember that? And Jesus told him, said, listen, I don't have that authority. And Jesus did not say there was a place before. He didn't say, oh, well, man, you know, you're wrong. There's no, there is no place on my right and left hand side. He just said, listen, that position is given to who the Father has prepared. And look at these two. Verse 4, two olive trees, the two candles standing before God of the earth. There's that position that, that James and John asked for, and that position is given to these two characters. There are also two men that showed up with Jesus on the Mount of Transfiguration, Elijah and Moses. And if any man will hurt them, fire proceeds out of their mouth and devoureth their enemy. And if any man will hurt them, he must in, them, in this manner be killed. These have power to shut heaven. That it rained not in the days of their prophecy. Now who, who has that word? Who has that authority? It's Elijah that we read today by James. Written to the twelve tribes scattered aboard. When you guys are scattered aboard in the tribulation period. I want you to remember Elijah. Because there's coming a period of time that a man's going to come up. And he's going to say no rain. And he's going to pray for no rain. And we go back over here to 1 Kings 17. But according to my word, that sure looks like that prophet in the tribulation period, Elijah. God is going to listen to Elijah. It is judgment. It is pre-judgment. Listen, I'll show you my... Jews require a sign. What is a sign? No rain. Boom. Three and a half years. No rain. Isn't that a sign enough? And the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, unto Elijah, Get thee hence, and turn thee eastward, and hide thyself. Look at that, hide. Adam and Eve hid themselves from God. He's like, hey, you hide from Ahab and Jezebel. And we'll see that later about Jezebel. Hide thyself before the brook Tertera. There's all kinds of places mentioned. That is before Jordan. So here's a river that is along the Jordan River. It shall be that thou shalt drink of the brook. Because there's going to be no rain. There's going to be no water. But I will give you a place to, to drink. And I, God, have commanded the ravens. That's the first time ravens shows up. Plural. I've called this black bird this unclean bird. It's unclean bird. To feed thee there. There. You better go to that brook. You go anywhere else, you're not going to get your food. And where God has told us to go, we better go, then God will supply your needs. If you walk anywhere else, you get out of the way, you rebel against God, you're not going to get the blessing. So he went and did according to the word of the Lord. So now he's going to get fed. And he himself is going to get a sign. What is the sign? Here comes the birds delivering his food. It's remarkable that animals in the Bible will listen to God 100%. Mr. Whale, swallow that man swimming. Okay, oh. okay, Mr. Whale, spit him out. Oh, but he and he didn't have to fight with the whale. The whale went along the, the beach where God told him to go. And he spit out Jonah. Boom. Mr. Ass, I have a message for you to teach Balaam. 
start speaking. And that ass began speaking. That ass has never been rid, the coat of the foe of the ass, that never been ri ridden. God steps up to him and says, hey, I'm getting on you. You ain't going to buck me off. He gets on them, and that just carries them right into Jerusalem. Noah sends out the animals, a raven. One takes off, never comes back. One comes back. He sends out the dove. Dove goes out, can't find nothing, comes back in. He sends out the dove again, then God says, Olive leaf. Get an olive leaf and bring it back. Animals listen more to God than man will listen to God. So he went and did according to the word of the Lord, for he went and dwelt by the brook Chernareth, that is before Jordan. So there's his water supply. And the ravens brought him bread and flesh in the morning and bread and flesh in the evening. And he drank of the brook. So here God wants us to be vegetarians. What's flesh? It's meat. Now there's a rabbi Jewish story that says that these ravens went into the king Ahab's kitchen and grab I don't know it's a cute little story but it's not in the Bible but that's what they say but there's one thing I can point out in this verse that's in the verse that other fairy tale stories we don't know he was brought flesh and bread in the morning and in the evening that would have been the times of the law of the daily sacrifice one lamb was to be offered in the morning and one lamb was to be offered in the evening and there is a precise means of what you're to do so it's amazing that these ravens brought elijah his food in the morning i guarantee probably 6 a.m and in the evening i guarantee with scripture with scripture it would be 6 p.m the time that the priests in jerusalem will be offering the daily sacrifices elijah's being fed by unclean birds and the birds did not eat have you ever thrown bread out to any kind of bird to feed them? They don't come back and say, here, would you like to have a morsel? Thank you so much. My tummy's full. You can have the... No bird's done that. That's a sign to Elijah. Jews require a sign. Elijah is a Jew. And it came to pass after a while that the brook dried up because there had been no rain in the land. Now we're told that three and a half years. We don't know how far we are in now. So, the physical and spiritual condition of Israel is, they're dried up. God is not blessing them. And the rain, the lack of, is a judgment upon Israel that you're not doing right. Is it a wonder that there are places in America that the place is just desert and so dry, and yet they got to pump water into those cities, those places, and yet they are going about with crime. They're going about with gambling. They're going about with everything that defiles God. Drought is one, one of the means of God's prejudgment and judgment. And the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, Arise, get thee to Zarpath, which belongeth to Zidon. Now let's run our Bibles back to chapter 16, verse 31. God is so so hum humorous. In 1631, and it came to pass as, as if it had been a light thing for him to walk in the sins of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, he took to wife Jezebel, the daughter of Ethbaal, king of the Zidonians. Now back to verse 9 and 17. God's like, I'm going to send you over there where Jezebel came from. And I'm going to take care of you. Now Zidon is a port between uh, Tyre and Zidon. Well, it's called Zidon. The city Zafra. It's on the Mediterranean Sea. So Elijah's gone from somewhere in the Jordan River all the way across Israel and into the Mediterranean Sea area and dwell there. All right, here's another place I got you. You better go where I tell you to go. 
If you don't, nothing's going to happen for you. Behold, I have commanded a, wo a widow woman there to sustain me. Luke 4, 26. Luke 4, 26. A lot of scripture with Elijah. And we can get into being John the Baptist, but Luke 4, and we'll start in 24. Luke 4, 24. And he said, Verily I say unto you, no prophet is accepted in his own country. Jesus, a Jew, is in Jewish city. And they will have nothing to do with it. He came unto his own, his own received them not. But I tell you of a truth. Now, did Jesus really have to say that? The one who said, I'm the way, the truth. Because listen, I'm going to tell you the truth here. Many widows in Israel. So where we are, we're in Israel. Right now in Kings. In the days of Elias, there he is. This is the Greek form of Elijah. That's all it is. When the heavens was shut up three years and six months. James 5, 17 said that. When the great famine, great famine was throughout the land. The brook is dried up. <laughs> And we'll see in the next following chapters how great this famine is. But unto none of them was Elias sent, save unto Sarkarta, again the Greek spelling, a city of Sidon, in the Old Testament, the Z, unto a woman that was a widow. Now, and then he goes into uh, Naaman, but verse 28. And all they in the synagogue, when they heard these things, were filled with wrath. Why? He just mentioned two Gentile people that God helped. Naaman, who had leprosy, he was a Gentile. God helped him. This widow is a Gentile. God says, I want you to go to a Gentile. I want an unclean bird to take care of you. I'd rather have an unclean bird, and I'd rather have a Gentile take care of my Jewish man of God, Jewish prophet, then the sins and the wickedness that is going on in Israel to take care of him. And a ha-ha moment, though not ha-ha, funny, but the thing is, you got to think, what if this was Peter or Jonah? Hey guys, I want you to go to this Gentile woman and I want her to take care. Those two men would have got angry. Not so, Lord, I'm not un anything unclean. Well, then you're going to die, Peter. <laughs> And Jonah, you want me to go west? I'll go east. You want me to go north? I'm going south, but I ain't going. And look at Elijah. So he arose and went to Zartha. Now Peter said, we ought not to be eating with Jews. I mean, Gentiles, excuse me. Where does Elijah say that? <laughs> I want you to go to, the, and it's a Jewish Gentile city on the Mediterranean Sea. Now, can you imagine? Now, I don't know if he had a camel, ass, or he didn't have a car, he didn't have a bus, he didn't have an airplane. He's traveling from the Jordan River all the way across Israel to the Mediterranean Sea, and already brooks have dried up in this great famine that Jesus said it was. That both Jesus and James said it's going to be three and a half years. Now we don't know how far we are into this panic. And we must look at the characteristic that what goes on with Elijah is it's no good time. The birds are not bringing him food no more. He does not have that brook. It's dried up. Now I don't know if he took a canteen. It would have been wise. Belong to Zidon and dwell there. Verse 9. Behold, I have commanded a widow woman there to sustain thee. Now, this is where Jesus tells the story, and they get angry. How dare that man of God go to a Gentile house? So he arose and went to Zarphon. No complaints, no arguments. And, went, and when he came to the gate of the city, behold, the widow woman was there gathering sticks. Now look at that sign for Elijah. Jews require a sign. I want you to go in that city. He hasn't even got to that 
to the end. Here's the gate, and there's a woman picking up sticks, and that's the woman that God said. Gathering sticks. And he called to her and said, Fetch me, I pray thee, a little water in a vessel that I may drink. Now who knows when the last time he had a drink. First thing he says is, Woman, I need a drink. It's a famine. This is, now, we forget. When we look at the story of Elijah, remember Elijah said, get four barrels of water and put it on the sacrifice? We are in a great famine. That water can go for people. And you want to waste it on the altar? The one that's causing the famine is the one doing the speaking right now. Don't you think that he would have said, Lord, Here's my cup. Can you rain in my cup? You think he could have done that? You think God would answer him? But what did James say? A man would like passage. I am so thirsty. You give me a drink. At any moment, he could have said, Lord, rain. That's it. I'm done. I'm fed up. I need water. Rain. But he suffered along with everybody else. God gave him a little providence, a little care but still and as she was going to fetch it she was going to go she was going to go get the water he called to her and said bring me I pray thee a morsel of bread in thy hand uh, when was the last time he had the bread from the birds I'm hungry I'm thirsty but I'm hungry and she said as the Lord Jehovah Remember, she's a Gentile. Look at that. That Gentile woman said, Jehovah, capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D. Jesus walks into the synagogue. He said, this woman that was a widow of Zidon, and, you know, ah, kill him, kill him. She's doing better than what they're doing. She's taking care of the prophet. As the Lord thy God liveth, thy God. Huh? Okay, it's she recognizes who Elijah is. Why? God has already spoken to her. I have commanded the widow woman to, to sustain. She's waiting for Elijah to come. At that moment, she show, he shows up. That's gotta be that's gotta be him. And she goes forth to fetch me, calls and fetch me. Verse twelve. And she said, "As the Lord thy God liveth, I have not a cake. I, I don't have any, but a handful of meal in a barrel. That's the first time barrel shows up. So I got a barrel. It's got some meal. A handful. That's enough. I can put in my hand. And a little oil in a cruise. And behold, I am gathering. This is how bad it is. Two sticks." I'm not gathering sticks. I'm not gathering a handful of sticks. She says to Elijah, two sticks. That's all I need to cook this. What for? That I may go in and dress it for me and my son. <coughs> Excuse me. That we may eat it and die. All I need is two sticks for my last meal. That's enough to make this bread. That's how much I got. I'm in the valley. I'm suffering. Sir, I can get you the water. A cake. I got just enough for me and my son. Which you probably figure, and much as she loves her son, she's going to divide that thing into quarters. She's going to get at least probably three quarters to her son, and she's going to get a quarter of it. And Elijah said unto her, Fear not. Go and do as thou hast said. But make me there of a little cake first. How? What nerve do you got? What on earth is Elijah doing? Verse 9. I have commanded a widow woman there to sustain thee. He's putting God to the sign. Is this the very woman? If this is the woman, you're going to make me that cake first. 
if you're not the woman, you're going to tell me, go, you know, get out of here. Who do you think you are? Uh, you know, you got some nerve. Get out of my face. I ain't not going to get you the water. First, and bring it unto me. And after, make for thee and for thy son. That's impossible. She just told you she's got enough for only her and her son and none for you, Elijah. That's Jesus Christ. Stretch forth your hand that's dried up. God. Uh, Jesus. I can't stretch forth my hand. Oh. It's stretched forth. It's moving. Talks to a blind man. What, shall, what do you see? Uh, Jesus. I'm blind. I can't see. That's impossible. And yet he made the man to see. He says, I see men as trees walking. This is the same thing, Elijah. Look at the characteristics and study Elijah and separate Moses. Two different men. The law and the prophet. And look at them with the Lord Jesus Christ. And they all three fit together. For thus saith the Lord God of Israel. The barrel of meal shall not waste. Neither shall the cruise of oil fail. Unto the day that the Lord send rain upon the earth. Now that day that he sends the rain is going to be Elijah saying, Lord God, we finally need rain. Because it was at his work. Alright, he's going to, he told the woman, you go make that cake first, you feed me, then you feed your son, and then you're going to have an unlimited supply. You will not need a warehouse shopping. But that barrel will produce, or will produce, that oil will have for you every single meal that the three of us will need. Now, you can imagine that woman get up in the middle of the night, popping that lid open, like, is there a little somebody, what's going on here? And yet God says, is anything impossible for the Lord? So let's see what happens. And she went and did according to the saying of Elijah. And she and he and her house. And her house. So there's more than her son. But the other people weren't going to eat. She said her and her son are going to eat and we're going to die. But there are people other in that house. Because he would say, and she and he, that's Elijah, and her house. If it was just the son, the Holy Spirit knows what son is. It would have said, and she and he and her son did eat many days. So that woman believed God and she has been given a mountain top. She is now being sustained by God by life. Is that not the Jesus Christ? You believe and put your faith upon Jesus. He will give you life. She has put her faith in God and his prophet Elijah. Old Testament. And guess what? She's got life. Now do you know somewhere else that this story would be followed in the gospel? About Jesus. Well, not just that, but the, the thing is, what about with the part he, he, at the, when he comes the second advent, he, he gathers the sheep nations and the goat nations, and he brings up the Gentiles. And they say, and he said, because you fed my people. Most of besides going to jail, you took care of their medical needs, and blah, 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 blah. And they're like, Lord, when did we take care of you? When did we nourish you? When did we visit you? She has no idea what she's doing. She's just saying, God said, here comes a man. I want you to take care of him. She had no idea she's going to have a meal over and over and over and over. She had no idea she's going to be assigned and her house is going to be assigned to the Jew. She is blessed because she helped a man of God through the children of Israel. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. She's a type of Wait a minute. It rains three and a half years. Elijah's there. He's calling for the rain. Comes up. We're at the close of the period of rain. And here's a Gentile that's been given life because she took care of a Jew. Look at that. We are in the tribulation of First Kings 17. Ahab is a type of Antichrist. 
Do you know what other wife is mentioned in the book of Revelation as far as the Great Tribulation? Jezebel. Now look at that. Who is one of them men that's going to show up in the Tribulation period saying there's going to be no rain? Elijah. There he is. It looks like Elijah is going to go right up to the Antichrist's face and say, Ha! You're going to be in trouble. The barrel meal wasted not, neither did the cruise of oil fail. That's a miracle. That's just as much as four, how many loaves of bread and two fishies? According to the word of the Lord, which he spanked by Elijah. Provision. Elijah is now getting much better than what the birds can bring. We're going to stop right there.